All right, what's up, my dudes? I'm Caleb Jones, back at it again another video. Today's video, we're gonna talk about why you shouldn't quit school to become a professional skateboarder. So hopefully you liked this video. Feel free to comment, subscribe, and like. All right, so lately I've been on Instagram. I was scrolling through Instagram, and I was looking on Facebook, and I noticed there's like, there's a lot of amateur skateboarders out here. And I'm, I know this for a reason, because I've actually been in this position, so this is how I know. But there's a lot of amateur skateboarders out here that they quit school and they end up trying to move to California to become a professional skateboarder, which is cool. Like, you know, you should never give up on your dreams at all. Like, if you want to, be, if you want to become a professional skateboarder or a famous YouTuber or own your own company, like, yo, thumbs up. Like, you should do that. Like, chase your dream. But the only thing I'm trying to say is, like, if you want to become a professional skateboarder and you want to quit school and move to California, like, hopefully you got a backup plan. Hopefully you move to California and you got a job. If y'all kids don't know this, most amateur skateboarders nowadays, they don't make really anything. Most of them make maybe $500 a month off a skateboard company. Like, depending on what shoe company you ride for, like if you're on Nike, I'm sure Nike amateur skateboard, I'm sure they make pretty decent money. I really don't know what their salary is, so I couldn't really tell you. But I know like if you ride for like DGK, those amateurs make maybe like $500. So if you ride for a skateboard company, a truck company, um, a wheel company, a shoe company, you maybe, you might be bringing home $2,000 a month, maybe if you're lucky, maybe $1,500. That's just if you're lucky. Yeah, uh, I say maybe 80% of professional skateboarders make a decent living to actually be able to afford nice houses and nice cars. But what I'm trying to say to you is, don't quit school to become a professional skateboarder. If you want to chase your dream to become a, a professional skateboarder, do that. But make sure you finish school because if you finish school and you have a degree and you don't make it in skateboarding, you still can get a decent job making decent money and you'll be able to provide for yourself. A lot of these skateboarders that quit school and move to California, they end up living on people's couches, they end up living on people's floors. Like, and for me, like, yes, I would love to be a professional skateboarder, but as I started skating and I started traveling, I started to see how things worked a whole lot better. And I was just like, man, I don't want to be one of these people that end up sleeping on somebody's couch or sleeping on somebody's floor. floor. And I damn sure don't want to be the person eating ramen noodles every day and cans of tuna. Like, no, like that's not the life that I want. So I had a, I had a decision, like when I finished, like I graduated high school and I had a decision. I was like, do I want to, do I want to keep chasing my dream and become a professional skateboarder? Or do I want to finish school and get a good job making good money. So I sat down and I thought about it and I was like, you know, I wanna be a professional skateboarder, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep skating and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a job, a part-time job, and I'm just gonna keep working and see how things work. And something I noticed is like, nowadays you could be um, the best skateboarder in the world and have no sponsors, or you could be somewhat good of a skateboarder, a skateboarder and have pretty good sponsors. It's really based on like who you know. If you know the right people, when you get your foot in the door, then you're good. Like that's, that's that's the best way to do it. Like yeah, you can go to California, but if you go to California, try to meet certain pros and certain amps and just network and just meet the right people to get your foot in the door. You might end up getting a job working at like a warehouse or something, like a Hulk warehouse or a DGK warehouse or whatever skateboard companies you wanna work for, you know what I'm saying? Or you can be like a sales rep. Sales reps make pretty decent money, I think. The average skateboard sales rep makes between like ninety to hundred thousand dollars a year. Which that's good money. But the thing is, is if you've looked at my video, a couple of my videos, and you've seen like my house tour, my house is like, I want to say, I think it's like 1,900 square feet. Uh, we pay like 92,000 for our house, and our mortgage is like $600 a month, which isn't bad. But a house my size in California would cost you about 600 to $700,000. It's a big difference. So if skateboarders out there making $2,000 a month, and their rent's $4,500 a month, like, that's why they got roommates, because it's so hard. But if they were smart, they'd make that money, they'd live on the East Coast for a decent price, and they would just travel back and forth to California, and then just like sleep on people's couches for like two or three weeks, or how long they wanna be out there. But at the same time, they would have their own place, they will be able to afford rent, and they won't have to be worried about like, where they gonna sleep next. Like I seen, when I was in California, I seen I, one house just full of like, a bunch of dudes, and they was all sleeping on, the floor, they was all sweaty, and everybody's taking a shower in one shower, and everybody's using the same washer and dryer. Like, that's not the life I wanted. And I was like, I'm, I'm not gonna be that person. I will never be that person. So, I got me a job working at UPS, and I just started working at UPS. Uh, and I've been there for like five years now, and I make decent money. And I go in there like four o'clock in the morning. I'm out of there by nine o'clock in the morning. So I have all day to skate. If I want to travel, I can just tell them, like, look, I'm going out of town for two or three weeks. And they're cool with it. They're not gonna fire you because I'm a good worker. 
And like, you know what I'm saying? You, your education, if you get an education, you will always have that. You can always get a good job if you have an education. If you don't have an education, and you quit school to become a skateboarder and it don't work out for you, you end up working at McDonald's or like a family dollar and just making like maybe eight, nine dollars an hour. And the struggle is gonna be real. So I'm just telling y'all these kids, like don't don't be that person, you know? If there's a lot of kids out here that have parents that are doctors and stuff like that and they're set for life. And I have a friend right now, his parents are like probably millionaires. I'm sure he lives in like this big house, but they don't do nothing for him. And he was like in the same boat. He wanted to skate and hang out with his friends and smoke cigarettes and do drugs and all this crazy stuff and not really focus on what he had to take care of. But now he's back in school and he's doing good and he has a little bit of money and I hang out with him and I skate with him. It's the best feeling in the world to see one of my good friends go from nothing to actually having something and I try to coach him in the right way to try to help him out. And there's a lot of people out here that are like, oh, well, you think you're cool or you got sponsors or this, this, and this. And you think you're so good at skating and like, nah, I don't think I'm the best person at skateboarding. Like, I think I'm okay at skateboarding. I skateboard because I love it. And yes, if I could make a million dollars skateboarding, all sponsors, that would be like a dream come true. But I'm not skating to make millions of dollars. I'm skating because I love to skate. The same reason I make YouTube videos is I make YouTube videos so kids can watch my videos and maybe in the future they can look back like, okay, well, I, I took your steps and it helped me out somewhat. Like, how I made my sponsoring videos. Like, a lot of kids hit me up and said, Yo, thanks, so this really helped me out. And that's why I'm here for it. What I'm trying to say is, at the end of the day, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't go, don't quit school and move to California to become a professional skateboarder. If that's what you want to do and it's in your heart and you believe you can make it, then go for it. But it's hard, I'm telling you. I've been there, I've done it, I know what it's like. It is so hard. So always have a backup plan. If you want to skate and become a professional skateboarder, then do that. Like, dreams always come true. But just do it in the right way. Always have a backup plan. Make sure you got some money saved up so if you move to California and you end up being a roommate with somebody, you're going to be okay until you find a job. Don't move out there just thinking everything's lovely and dandy because it's not. I've been to California. It is not like living on the East Coast. But that's my tip for you. Hope you liked the video. Feel free to comment, subscribe, and like. Until next time, adios. Decide to take that chance to move to California to change your dream and become a professional skateboarder. Make sure you got a little bit of money saved up and make sure you got a car. Or if you get out there, you can actually afford a car. Because if you keep asking people for a ride and trying to bum rides, it's gonna get old real fast. I'm, I'm telling you. And think about it also, too if you live on somebody's couch and you're not breaking your leg or hurting your foot and you can't afford to pay rent, you think they care about you? Nope, they're gonna kick you out. So make sure you got a plan.